I say this to him, I say, Lord, uh, deliver me. Cause all I seem to do is hurt me. Hurt me. And I got a little out of it. Pastor Chipman, welcome, welcome, welcome to our telecast on today. It's a pleasure. It is a pleasure to be bringing you the word of God on today. Amen. Today is a great day to be alive and in the body of Christ. It is a blessing to be in the Lord's house on today. And you say, well, I'm not at church, but you are in the Lord's house. You are. Our subject today for our home daily Bible reading is going to be God is your husband. God is your husband is our home daily Bible reading from for today. It is coming from the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 through 5. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 through 5. Uh, this is Pastor Stephen Chipman and you know it is just good to be in your presence one more time. The Lord has allowed us 
to live and to have our being with him. And we just thank God for this opportunity to be alive and to be well as it is. Amen. There, there was a saying out there, say, it could be worse. It could be. It could be worse. So we thank God for what it is on today. So let us get ready to go into our study. Let us start off first with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you knowing that you are almighty God, knowing that you sit high, you look low, knowing that you're everywhere all at the same time. Lord, we come to you, O oh God, because you are our maker and our creator. You are Jehovah to sit canoe, our righteousness. You are El Shaddai, the almighty God. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Lord, you rule and you super rule. You are the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the horse pouring in the valley, the rose of Sharon, our bright and morning star. You are our savior, the lamb of God. You gave your life for us. We come bowing down at your footstool, Lord, asking you to forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against us. Lord, we are godly sorry for what we have done, O oh God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would forgive us, O oh God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that others will forgive us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we help us to forgive those that have sinned against us. Lord, now we pray for those who are sick, Lord, in their bodies. And there are some who are watching, who are listening today, Lord. Touch them in a special way, O oh God. Lord, touch, O oh God, cancer. Touch, Lord, O oh God, sugar, Lord. Touch, uh, uh, Lord, diabetics, high blood pressure, Lord. Touch, Lord, those who have stress and mental and anxiety issues. Touch those who are addicted to drugs, Lord. Touch those, Lord, who are living outdoors and do not have shelter, Lord. Touch those who are hungry and do not have food, O oh God. Lord, we pray today, O oh God. Lord, we know you as a provider. We know you as a healer. We know you as a doctor in a sick room, a lawyer in a courtroom. Lord, we, we thank you that you're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you that you're the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Lord, we bind Satan. We give him no place in us, no place in our mind, no place in this study. Loose your spirit of love, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. <laughs> God bless you today. It is great to be alive. Amen. I was reading in a passage uh, just before we get started. I was reading in a passage where it said, those who really know their Bibles should be glad uh, to come into the presence of God and be happy because what God has brought us through and God is bringing us out of. Amen. And I praise God. Let's get right to our scriptures for today. Again, our subject for our home daily Bible reading is God is your husband. I said it. God is your husband. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 through 5. And let's get ready to read them as we go there now. All right. God is your husband. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 through 5. I'm going to be reading out of the New International Reader's Version of the Bible. So if you have that, get that out, and let's get ready to go over there at this time. I'm reading from the New International Reader's Version of the Bible because it does such a good job <clears throat> of making it simple and easy to explain. And so I want to go there today. It's written on a fourth grade reading level, and that's for my benefit amen, as we go there now. Let's go to verse number one. I'm going to read all five verses, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to have some discussion on those verses. Here we go. Verse number one says, Jerusalem, sing. You're now like a woman who never had a child. Burst into song. Shout with joy. You who have never had labor pains, 
you are now all alone, but you will have more children than a woman who still has a husband, says the Lord. Make a large area for your tent. Spread out its curtains. Go ahead, make your tent wider. Make its ropes longer. Drive the stakes down deeper. You will spread out to the right and the left. Your children after you will drive out the nations that are now living in your land. They will settle down in the deserted cities of those nations. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame anymore. Do not be afraid of being dishonored. People will no longer make fun of you. You will forget the time when you suffered as slaves in Egypt. You will no longer remember the shame of being a widow in Babylonia. I made you. I am now your husband. My name is the Lord who rules over all. I am the Holy One of Israel. I have set you free. I am the God of the whole earth. That is the word of God for the people of God. And again, our subject for our home daily Bible reading is God is your husband. God is your husband. I am Pastor Stephen Chipman, pastor of the Second St. John Church, 305 Ingram Boulevard, right here in West Memphis, Arkansas. My phone number is right here on the screen. If you desire to give your life to Christ, amen, or rededicate your life to Christ, or need prayer, and me to join you in prayer on any subject, call that number, leave a message, leave your phone number, and I will try my best to get right back in touch with you. Sunday morning, Sunday school, Bible study, starts at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning, where men can study with men, women with women, and youth with youth. That's the way we do it. Also, worship service every Sunday starts at 10, 15 a.m. 10, 15 a.m. is the start of our worship service where we are glad in the presence of the Lord and we express that gladness. Sunday mornings, 10, 15 a.m. Come be a part of us. And every Wednesday evening, time 6 p.m., our regular midweek Bible study. Again, God is your husband. Amen. Our scriptures today give enlightenment to many of the things that we have been through. Here in Isaiah, Isaiah is known as the eagle-eyed prophet. Yeah, I said it right. Isaiah is known as the eagle-eyed prophet. He could see further into the future than any other prophet of his day. He could see the cross, he could see the crown, but he couldn't see the valley where the church was between the cross and the crown. Uh, but Isaiah uh, prophesied about many things well out into the future. Amen. We're in the book of Isaiah, in the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah is telling the children of Israel, you know, you've been in captivity, you've been slaves in Egypt, you've been in Babylonia, but God is about to do a great reversal. Amen. And that's what, what we've been talking about. We've been talking about this whole month of August, something called the Great Hope of the Saints. That was our monthly uh, topic for the month. Our unit topic was uh, the Great Hope hope of the saints, and the great hope of the saints is eternal life in that new Jerusalem. Amen. We are citizens, amen, of a new city, that new Jerusalem, and that's our great hope to when we get to meet him, Jesus, our Savior, and spend life eternal with our creator. That's our hope, and that's the great hope of the saints. So we've been talking about all month, we've been talking about the eschatology, the study of end times. That's what eschatology is, the study of the end times. 
And we've been talking about that through different ways. We've been talking in Revelations. We've been talking at different other uh, areas of the Bible, Zechariah. We've been talking in different books of the Bible, but we've been talking about eschatology, uh, the end times. And what does that do for us? Amen. I remember on Wednesday, Bible study, midweek study, we were talking about uh, in Revelations, we were talking about the Alpha and Omega. And uh, we know that the order that Revelation was written, the Revelation, book of Revelation or the Apocalypse, amen, was given in this particular way. God gave it to Jesus. Jesus gave it to the angel and the angel gave that vision to John. Let me say it again. God gave the vision to Jesus. Jesus gave the vision to an angel and an angel gave the vision to John. And you can see that in Revelations chapter one, uh, verse one and following. Amen. That communication order is important. Even though John is the writer, he is not the originator of the revelation. And why did he give it? Somebody said, well, why did, should I know about end times? Because it has an effect on how we live today. How you see things in the future can determine uh, what aspect or way we live in this day and this time. That's why it is important to talk about end times because you have an opportunity right now to change your destination. Yep, 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 yep. You have an opportunity to change your destination. Uh, the Bible consistently says the time is now. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In Revelations, he said, the time is now. There's an urgency to it. Amen. We don't know the day or the hour. Our end time can come. Our end of time as we know it on the earth could come at any moment. We don't know the day or the hour. We don't know the day or the hour when he shall, Jesus shall make his return. We we, we, we can read the signs and try to do our best to determine, but the, the instant moment that it happens, we don't know. It hadn't been told to us. But we do know this. He's on his way back, and the prophecy will not fail. We must get our lives in order in order to be ready for his return. So, so knowing about eschatology, the end times, is very important. Matter of fact, I have a hope, a great hope uh, of the saints is that an expectancy. I'm expecting. I'm excited about what's going to happen, especially this, in the end times, we shall reign with him. We shall be kings, uh, the Bible says. We shall be kings. We shall be priests. There's coming a time when we're going to have to reign with Jesus. Oh, it's going to be exciting. Now, here in Isaiah, I, I'm just so happy and expectant about what we've heard so far as our study has continued throughout the month. At first, you know, I thought it was a bit difficult uh, to go into those matters because those are the very things that uh, sometimes we do not like to talk about because it, it takes uh, some time to get in and have an understanding of what's going on in the text. I, I use the term here already. I told you these all these things are going to bring about what we call the great reversal. The great reversal is all about the fall of man and the downward spiral of man. And, and God's going to turn this whole thing around. It seems like uh, God's people have always had this thing about being the butt of bad jokes uh, or, or I don't see why you're going to church and all of that. There's going to be a great reversal. Number, number one, the reversal of my destination. I, you know, I, I, you know, if I was of myself, and depending on what I could do to be saved, amen, I would bust hell wide open for all have sinned and come short and the wages of sin is death. But now I have received the free gift, the gift of God, which is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that you can turn your destination around. That's the great reversal. I can reverse the curse. The law carries a curse. I'm not able to keep every point of the law. The law was only an indication that I need a savior. It lets me know sin. It lets me know 
that I deserve to die. But the great reversal is by accepting Jesus, I can reverse that. Reverse that death sentence to a sentence of life. <laughs> life with him, life eternal. So let us go just a little further. What was Isaiah uh, trying to prophesy and encourage? I'm glad you asked. Let's go over here and look a little bit. Let's go back over to uh, verse 1. He, he comes in here, and I want you to know that, that they are kind of, uh, these people are down uh, trodden. They are people who've come out of slavery in Egypt, been captive in Babylonia, and they need some encouragement. And the prophecy uh, uh, does just that, gives them some encouragement. Uh, one of the things uh, I wanted to tell you about that particular encouragement, it says, uh, one of the things I read, it said this, I can't sing, you know, uh, this is one of the guys talking about how he couldn't sing, but I want you to see something just a little bit differently. Uh, uh, it says, the prophet uses three images to portray the miracle of God's grace. The servant of the Lord has changed everything. He's changed everything by his sufferings, death, and resurrection. Isaiah helps us grasp what the servant's victory is worth to us. That's what Isaiah does. He helps us grasp what that victory is to us. Now, this is what I, I wanted you to see earlier. Uh, it said the test of a church's faith is not only the wording in its creed, but also the gladness in its worship. The gospel demands a carefree spirit. If we aren't going to hell anymore, if we stand to inherit every blessing Almighty God can think of, if nothing can stand in the way of our restored humanness because it's all ours through the merit of Christ, the friend of sinners, if that can't make us smile, what can? That's what I was trying to get over to you, is that we have a right to be glad. Yes. Yes, we do. We have a right to have joy because Jesus has made us and given us that peace of mind and that joy. See, in verse number one, Jerusalem sing, it says in the NRIV. You are now like a woman who never had a child. Burst into song. Shout with joy. You who have never had labor pains, you are now all alone. But you will have more children than a woman who still has a husband, says the Lord. How can a single woman all alone have more children than a married woman but, but Isaiah the prophet is telling them, you ought to sing because in the spirit, God is going to enable exactly this thing to happen. He said, make a large area up for your tent. Spread out the curtains. Make room, make room. God's about to expand your territory. Get excited. Go ahead and make your tent wider. Make its ropes longer. You're gonna, it's going to have to be bigger and wider. Drive the stakes down deeper. Because you're going to have to have a large tent to hold what God's going to bring to you. That's our hope. That's our, that's our hope. It's the great reversal. You may have been living in lack. You've been living without. But God is about to bring to us abundantly. Abundantly. I hear the sound of abundance. <laughs> God's about to do something in our behalf. I said it. God's about to expand our territory. God's about to do wonderful things for us because it's the great reversal. <laughs> oh, Satan had it planned for our bad, but God has turned it around for our good. Widen your tent. By verse 3, he says, you will spread out to the right and the left. Hey, hey, not just one side. You're going to spread out to the right and the left. Your children after you will drive out the nations that are now living in your land. 
you're going to get those things that God promised you. Doesn't matter. He's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked unto the just. Transferring the wealth of the wicked to the just. That's what he's about to do. Doesn't matter that somebody else is living in that mansion that God has for you. Don't worry about it. God's about to make the great reversal. What he has for you is for you. They will settle down, your children will, in the deserted cities of those nations. Those other people who you thought had it so good, God's going to allow your children to sit in those places. They're going to be already deserted. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Do not be afraid. You will not, you will not be put to shame anymore. I know, I know. People have ridiculed you. People have shamed you. They they push reproach on you, shameless. But I'm going to roll all of that away. I'm going to reverse all of that shame, all of that being talked about, called out of your name, living beneath your privileges. I'm going to reverse all of that. Get excited. Sing Jerusalem. Be like a woman who never had a child. They ain't even got a husband. But I can make it possible Enlarge your territory, build your tents bigger, amen. Drop your net for a catch. God have mercy. Lord have mercy. Don't be afraid of being dishonored. People will no longer make fun of you. You will forget the time when you suffered as slaves in Egypt. God's going to be so good to you, you ain't going to even think about all of the bad stuff that happened in life. People ain't going to dishonor you no more. You're going to forget the time when you were doing without because I'm going to bless you in such a special way. No, you will no longer remember the shame of being a widow in Babylonia. Uh, look, look at that. Look, look at what the Lord can do. I made you, God says here. Well, that's what prophecy. Look at Isaiah speaking. I made you is what God said. I am now your husband. And we know that Jesus is the is the bridegroom of the church. The church is Jesus's bride. Ah, hallelujah. How do you like that? He, God is our husband. My name is the Lord who rules over all. I am the Holy One of Israel. I have set you free. I'm the God of the whole earth. Wow, 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 wow. Let your mind run through that. Let your mind run through that. Let your mind run through that. What we've been talking about today, God is your husband. God is your husband. You should be excited. Amen. We're talking about what's promised, eschatology, the study of the end times, amen. And we have a great expectancy, amen. We are pregnant with all these things that God has promised and about to bring to pass, so much so that it affects the way we live today. That's why we study about the end times because it affects what I live and what I do today. I'm grateful for things that God has promised that I have not received because I trust the one who promised. <laughs> oh, this is too good. This is too good. This is too good. This is too good to contain. Isaiah, the eagle-eyed prophet that could see further than any other prophet. He saw in the distance. He saw. He saw in the distance. He saw in the distance the suffering the death of Christ. He saw in the distance Jesus being crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What he didn't see was the valley in between the cross and the crown. No cross, no crown. No suffering, no reigning. You got to remember that. We're in the valley right now. We're expecting that end time of the crowning to come. We're expecting to reign with him. We're expecting to rule over cities we're expecting to be the priest, uh, uh, to, to let people know, humans know about God. Amen. Amen. To take messages from God to humans and, and from humans relaying them to God, relay, making, you know, witnessing to them about God. 
we're about to do all that stuff, all that stuff about the end time. It's going to come to pass. You want to understand Revelation, you need to get a chance to read Daniel, the book of Daniel. Amen. This thing all fits together. Amen. It all fits together. There's going to be a great reversal of the operation of how things are. It's going to be a great reversal. And sometimes it may come as a surprise. And some of the very things in history that he allowed the children of Israel to go through and brought them, they, they go down, he bring them back up. Amen. It's kind of like the book of Judges. Uh, they would cry out for a deliverer. The children of of God did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he, he allows them to go down through some stuff. And then they cry out and pray to God that God would send them a deliverer. And God sends them a deliverer in, in a judge. But but it's called the sin cycle. Then they do good for a while. Then they get back in sin. They go down and they cry out to God. And God will send them a deliverer, a judge, and deliver them. And, and they do good for so long. Then all of a sudden, the children of God did evil in the sight of the Lord. Examples of how God can reverse uh, things in our lives. Many of us have gone through many things in our lives that God has to show us he's able to to reverse and just like a good husband look 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 i made you god said i am now your husband responsibility of a husband is to care for his family that's what i wanted to go to responsibility of a husband is to care for his family to remove what a husband wants is he doesn't want any shame on his wife he does not want any shame on his wife a good husband wants to make sure that his wife and his family are taken care of. Amen. It looks bad on the husband for his family to be faring bad. Amen. Any man, any good man desires to see his family succeed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We didn't get down in this. God says, I am your husband. And if we know that God is our husband, we know we got a good man. Good man is going to make sure that we have everything that we need, that we're not going to have to be in shame, that, that, that we're not going to have to be doing without, because God is going to make sure that everything is adequate. Oh, Lord, have mercy. They quit teaching this to young men. They quit teaching this to young men, and I need you to tell some young man that the job of a husband is to make sure that his family is well taken care of. So we thank you today for joining us in this study about God is your husband. God is your husband. It's been great. We're going to say a prayer before we leave, but remember, you want to give your life to Christ. Through goodness have the law drawn us. Through his goodness, through his mercy, through his grace, you can be saved today. Jesus gave his life. He hung, bled, and died that you might have a right to eternal life. If you can believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died, buried, and was resurrected and sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you, you can be saved today. I can witness your soul salvation if you just call this number, 870-735-6300. Leave me your name and your telephone number. I'll call you back, amen, and I will be a witness to your testimony, your confession of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And remember, if you're sick, don't give up. We have a great expectation. There are many promises that we have. Thank God for you, and God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for what has transpired during this session, during this spot of time. We thank you, Lord, that you are our husband as the church. We thank you, Lord, for each and every listener. We thank you for each person that took time out to hear a word from you. Help us, Lord, as we study your word, that your spirit lead us, guide us, teach us, O oh God. 
your word. Help us, Lord, to be more like you. Lord, we thank you for this day and this hour. Lord, we leave, as we leave this study, but not your presence, we give your name, the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Enjoy the music as we get ready to leave at this time. Just sing that because all of us need deliverance at some level. Come on, say. Whoa, whoa. 